In May 2017, the United States and Saudi Arabia signed a series of letters of intent for Saudi Arabia to purchase arms from the US totaling $110 billion immediately and $350 billion over 10 years. This amount is larger than the GDP of huge countries like Egypt, Norway and Thailand. The US is not alone. The United Kingdom has sold $100 billion worth of Typhoon fighter jets to Kuwait, Oman and Saudi Arabia from 2010 to 2020. Not only Middle Eastern countries dominate the arms imports, but Australia, China, India, Egypt and even scientifically developed countries like South Korea and Taiwan also spend hundreds of billions of dollars in arms sales. And the question is, why they spend so much instead of producing weapons themselves? For some strange reason, people think technological advancement just appear out of thin air if we throw money around. In reality, technology is very difficult to produce and invent. Let's look at an interesting case. In 2017, China made, as per China, one of the greatest technological innovations in its history. Well, was it a new advancement in the field of robotics? No. A new reusable space rocket? No. A self-driving car? Even better. A cure for cancer? Even more inspiring. It produced its own ballpoint pens. Ballpoint pens aren't actually new to China. It has 3,000 pen manufacturers and they make around 38 billion pens a year and hold the monopoly of the global pen market with 80% global market share. There is just one problem. China doesn't possess the advanced alloys and machines needed to make a high quality pen ball and a socket. As a result, 90% of China's pen tips and 1000 tons of special steel are imported from Germany, Japan and Switzerland. It was such a national concern in China, even the premier of China noted saying, their inability to produce ballpoints is the real situation they are facing now. And in 2015, a state-run broadcaster hosted three top manufacturing chief executives in an hour-long talk show discussing what the country could do to solve the problem. And in 2017, a state-owned steel company said in a statement that after five years of research and development, it had finally come up with the right material compositions to mass-produce the steel needed to make the ball socket. They solved the problem and breakthrough lay in the right thinness of the additives such as lead and tellurium, mixed into the steel to give it the suitable degree of hardness and enhanced free cutting property. Well, for layman, this is very strange. A pen is such a simple object that is not understood why the Chinese are celebrating that they can produce their own pens. But the reason why it's so important because in today's world, technology, be it pens or assault rifles, it's so complex that it's difficult for any country to waltz in and produce their own. In fact, the reason why China had so much difficulty producing its own ballpoint pants was the Chinese manufacturers had no idea how Western companies made their metal balls and socket for the pen. Let that sink in. It took China, a highly industrialized country with millions of engineers and innovators, five years of research and millions of dollars, government intervention to figure out how to make this. China's struggle to come up with the right composition to ballpoints lights the problem in weapon manufacturing. If it took 5 years for China to come up with a simple ballpoint and a socket, how long do you think developing countries need to produce this or this? The aspect most people don't understand that we simply can't reverse engineer each and everything just by looking at it. Without the grant work and human resources, it's simply impossible. Resources and talent pool in metallurgy, machining, physics and chemistry and list of professions are needed. Don't get me wrong, a lot of major developing countries do produce assault rifles, tanks, armored vehicles and drones. For example, this is a Karakal rifle, Emirati designed and produced. Iran produces a bunch of models of assault rifles. Countries like Egypt, Algeria, Turkey and many other importers do produce their own drones. However, there are limits. One of the biggest issues in modern arms manufacturing is jet engines. 
Only five countries, the US, France, Germany, Russia, and the UK, produce jet engines. Even China has had difficulties producing engines for their fighter jets. China and India are an interesting case here. Both have designed nuclear missiles, have an advanced space program, and blasted rockets into space. But one vital technology remains out of reach is that is a reliable, high-performance fighter jet engine. Unlike India, China has been grinding and its defense industrial base is notorious for its tendency to borrow from foreign designs, particularly in the aerospace industry. Almost the entirety of China's modern fighter jet fleet has either borrowed liberally from or straight up copied American and Russian models. For example, the Chinese J-11 is a clone of the Russian Su-27, and the JF-17 is a modern development of the Soviet MiG-21, and the J-20 has a suspiciously uncanny resemblance to the F-22. And finally, J-31 is widely regarded to rely heavily on technology appropriated from the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Copying and implementing saves China time and money on research and development. However, the borrowing strategy remains constrained by bottleneck technologies due to lack of testing data and industrial ecology. China's reverse-engineered Russian jet engines during the 90s and 2000s invariably produced engines with extremely inferior lifespans and quality. The most obvious option for China is to simply build a better indigenous engine and in 2016, in their five-year plan, was the strong emphasis on improving the performance of indigenous jet engine designs and further development of the aerospace industry. In 2018, China signed a deal with Russia to buy 24 Su-35 fighter jets. This proves how difficult it is even for rich countries like China to design their own jet engines because if their fighter jets are inferior, it makes them basically useless against other modern fighter jets that Taiwan and other competitors of China are buying. In the case of India, India tried to build their own engine but failed miserably. And now they have made a deal with French Safran to get the technology of how to build Rafale fighter jets. The French pledged to transfer more work for the production of the M88 engine that powers its fighter jets to India if India orders 36 more Rafale combat jets. Plus, Safran will be getting billions of dollars in the following years. They are not just giving the secrets, they are partnering and that's very lucrative to the French. That's kinda not an offer, but a blackmail. Safran comes to this decision because almost every country dumped French Rafales except India. The first Rafael deal with India included 128 planes built on Indian soil with full technology transfer. But that failed, or at least is on standby, because building the Rafael in India happened to be more difficult than expected. It's not just a technology, but about an advanced infrastructure, plenty of contractors, and a large set of skilled workers that is extremely difficult to build from scratch. Another interesting reason why modern developing countries cannot build complex weapons. If you look at these top 5 jet engine manufacturers, in the past 400 years, they have been infamously imperialist and colonial superpowers. These five countries have been making the world's finest weapons for 300 years. If you played a civilization game, it's like these countries buff their military power and other attributes early on conquering and extracting resources. Modern jet engine technology, stealth technology, and many other aspects that make the military powerful are like the industrial revolution in power. The Big Five has hundreds of years of combined experience, but China and other have been only working on this for 30 years. Just like China struggling to come up with high quality ballpoints, it takes billions of dollars for research and testing to build a safe and reliable engine with thousands of components that function under supersonic speeds, extreme temperatures, and pressure. This involves state-of-the-art technologies in design, machining, casting, composite materials, exotic alloys, electric performance monitoring, and quality control. Additionally, what makes fighter jets of Big Five so special is that most of them have been tested in warfare, combat-proof, 
and collected a vast amount of performance and operational data from existing engines that give them the advantage to upgrade new versions with improved reliability, quality and fuel efficiency. Unless one of the big five agrees to sell their engine to other importing countries, we won't see any new jets coming out. For example, Germany and Turkey are in discussions as Germany had initially agreed to produce the necessary engines for Turkish helicopters, tanks and so forth. But Turkey is now asking Germany to teach Turks how to produce the engines directly, resulting in delay and contemplation in Berlin. This is a Turkish Altai tank produced in Turkey, but the engines are German-made. Naturally, none of the countries in Big Five has any interest in teaching anybody how to produce engines, especially jet engines. Air supremacy is everything in modern warfare, and you might be saying wherever you're from, my country produces this armored vehicle or tank or drone, but if your country cannot produce high-quality jet engines and fighter planes like the Big Five countries do, you are done in three days in warfare. Armored transport vehicles and light weapons most countries produce locally don't have any strategic importance. When it comes to building a military industrial complex, there are mainly three categories of weapons that represent a real challenge. First is producing an indigenous modern jet fighter that can provide a country with the air supremacy it needs. The second is the indigenous battle tank to break enemy lines and destroy armored vehicles. And finally, third, heavy battleships with the appropriate systems and technology, which proves to be as complex as developing an indigenous jet fighter. These are not necessary for every nation, and for example, Navy ships' main objective is to offer a nation with power projection capabilities and the ability to bombard coastal cities and transport. Additionally, you can add the necessity to build a multi-layered air defense systems of various scales including jamming, interception, and launch systems. These sites can take years to build. Without suppression of air defense and air superiority, you can have as many armored vehicles and tanks and drones as you want. You will inevitably be crushed in a couple of days by a hostile power that has advanced fighter jets and bombers. And you might be thinking about Israel. In the 50s and 60s, they have built their own competitive jet engines and fighter jets. Israel was able to copy the French Mirage fighter, but only because the Mossad, Israeli intelligence agency, found a pro-Israeli employee named Alfred, who later turned out to be a spy at Sulzer, at a Swiss company that made Mirage fighter jet engines for the Swiss Air Force under the license from the French. Alfred had the blueprints for the plane and he smuggled 200,000 blueprints in crates and sold the blueprints to the Mossad. It wasn't just a simple matter of taking apart a mirage. Israel had several, even though France put an embargo on them. You need to know what metals were used, the tolerance and many other compositions, just like the ballpoint. The blueprints had all that. Since it has been so long, the technology has changed. Israel's inventory is packed with US made of various Lockheed Martin fighter jets. To produce quality arms, you need a steel industry, engineers, chemists, machinists, metallurgists, theoretical scientists, computer scientists, or a spy agency like Mossad to build a weapon to win in a modern warfare. It takes a long time to build an engineering pre-degree and a project experience, billions of dollars, and this problem isn't something that can be solved by throwing money or people at it. It needs time which most countries that import arms haven't had. As an average person like most of us are, we are so out of touch with modern technology, if some of us traveled back to ancient ancient times, 1000 years back, we wouldn't even survive, let alone how to make a piece of cloth to cover ourselves. Well, thanks for watching, what do you think about weapon manufacturing, let me know in the comment section below, and what your country manufactures locally, drop that in the comment section, and if you find this video interesting, please hit the like button and subscribe, so the YouTube algorithm notices, and more people will join in the discussion. And if you have a buck to spare, support me on Patreon, it would help a lot. Thanks again.